So many people are going to be asking why I did this video and I think I needed to do it so that you could all, a lot of people have been touched by mine and, story, and Alfred's story. So I thought I would just take you on the five minute drive that literally has captured everybody's hearts like it did mine. Um, my eyes are extremely puffy, <laughs> been crying for five days. So yeah, here goes. It's an early start for both of us. He has to be at work by six, but he's got great work ethic. So he likes to be there by five to set everything up. Um, he's in the catering division at the Crown Plaza. And so he used to set up um, when people have their functions or whatever at the Crown Plaza. He'd always say to me, oh, today I've got 100 people or today I've got 200 people. And so it was either going to be busy or not, but he liked to get there early. So. He actually lives about two to three blocks away from me. If it rains, I take my route the other way because I know he walks that way to try and catch him. And in winter, if it was really, really cold, I'd also try to catch him earlier in his route because I didn't know exactly where he lived. Um, his wife is a domestic worker, Aggie, and um, he actually lived in Orlando, Soweto. And his daughter and his grandson lived there. And yeah so this is Lyndon and we, I used to fetch him and uh, many people have asked um, why I stopped to fetch him and Aggie I've met Aggie and um, through the power of social media I found Aggie so thank you everyone and she asked me yesterday why I stopped to pick him up and I said I don't know it was a cold winter's morning and he was wearing a red shell hat and sometimes I stop at the shell for a coffee and he just happened he just happened to be walking up the road and I thought geez I feel so sorry for this guy I'm gonna stop and help him well I wind down my window he had a shell hat on I thought I'll drop him at the garage and um, he got in and then he, we drove past the shell garage and I was like oh dear where does this guy work and he said no I don't work at the shell garage then he told me I work at Crown Plaza and I thought okay cool and the second day I saw him I was like, oh my gosh, there's my friend. We hadn't even changed names the first time we met. And he got in and he was like, what is your name? And I said, Cindy. And he said, I'm Alfred. But he called me Sandy because he didn't hear me properly. And I just didn't correct him because I thought it was cool. Um, I actually didn't want him knowing that I worked on the radio or anything like that because our conversations in the morning were about more than what I do for a living. So this is um, the spot where I first found him. He was coming up this hill here on the left and as you can see it's quite dark. Uh, this is 7th Avenue in Parkhurst. Some of you might recognize the strip. Um, and I stopped here and I said, I wind down my window and I said, where are you walking to? And he said, I'm walking up to work. And I said, well, would you like a lift? And yeah, he jumped in. And then we would start from here. The talk would be, oh gosh sorry i'm late or oh you caught me early and then we would talk about how it rained or it hadn't rained generally always about the weather how was your day yesterday was it busy he would say to me how are the girls his girls alfred would always message me if he wasn't coming to work because he didn't want me picking random strangers up because he was so worried about me getting um attacked or anything that's where i thought he worked <laughs> the shop but he doesn't work there um and aggie told me the story yesterday about how he had gone to a funeral and some friends had taken him back to soweto to a part of soweto that he wasn't not orlando and he needed to be back in london on sunday morning and it was a saturday he was adamant he needed to be in london because he was just helpful with the lady at to the lady who, um, whose house he lived in. There was load shedding, so it was dark. Um, and apparently he was walking. This is the story the police have made up. And so that's where they got him, Aggie says. And she says, they stabbed him in the leg, the top. She said, and then the police say, he probably put up a very brave fight. They stabbed him in the heart. <laughs> And then there was blood for quite a while, which means that he didn't die straight away. <laughs> it means that he fought. 
and then he died and then she couldn't find him for three days and she said she never thought to go look in the mortuary because not her Alfred she called him Ali not his Ali not her Ali and she said when she found him in the mortuary it was just too hard and they had to bury him straight away in KZN because that's where he's from yeah and I couldn't find him for two weeks and like I say he always messaged me so when I went to the Crown Plaza on the 14th of February and they told me I had missed his memorial um, it's now a southern sun I missed his memorial by a week but apparently it was really beautiful so many people got up to talk because so many people actually crossed his path without knowing and now we're coming up to the stretch where this is where I dropped him off he would jump out here put my hazards on he would say yeah tomorrow's Friday or today's Thursday or whatever and he would go straight um, and I would turn left and go to work and that's how quick the, the drive was but it's amazing how in it's not even maybe three kilometers five minutes someone can really impact your life